Hello, I'm Matt Galloway, and this is The Current Podcast. Well, as you're hearing in the news, it is another by-election upset for Justin Trudeau's Liberals. The Bloc Québécois Louis-Philippe Sauvé beat out Liberal candidate Laura Palestini by just a couple hundred votes in a Montreal riding that has been held by the Liberals for most of the last century. The NDP was a close third in that riding, but it did keep its seat in a Winnipeg by-election. Joining me now to discuss the result in Montreal is Emily Nicolas, columnist for Le Devoir. She's in Montreal. Emily, good morning. Good morning. Just 250 votes separate the Liberal and the Bloc uh, candidates That's here. Right. People will say by-elections are just by-elections. It's not a general election. It doesn't mean anything. From your perspective, what does this loss in this riding tell you about the federal Liberals and Justin Trudeau? The key word here is instability. Um, and you've had that especially uh, in Quebec, but you have a really good example of that instability here. You have essentially three-way vote splitting. The the margin between uh, the Liberals and the Bloc Québécois, as you said, is just a couple hundred votes, but so it is between the Liberals and the NDP that arrived third. We essentially have people who won or lost the seat essentially by a margin that could be related to just how well organized are their get-out-the-votes uh, effort or how mobilized were their base, but really it is uh, something that is very hard to predict. Mm. And we have also seen an example of that last night when the NDP just around midnight was basically already celebrating victory and we only had a final vote count uh, happening uh, very late in the night around 2.45 uh, in the morning. And so when you see things like that, you know that politics is going to be very, very hard uh, to predict because there's too many players that are workable or are in the race. And that makes in our electoral system a lot of races very, very unstable. And there's going to be a lot of that to follow in the future, especially uh, in the Montreal region. This is a seat, as I mentioned, that was held by the Liberals for close to a century, comes three months after a Toronto by-election loss for the Liberals in another so-called safe seat. Is your sense that any seat is safe for the Liberals right now? Uh, no, it isn't. Uh, there are obviously some seats that are safer uh, than others, but there could be a lot of uh, mood swings in the electorate in the next couple of months or as we already uh, have now. What's really interesting for me in this race is that a lot of people were basically um, – trying to paint that as a race between the Liberal and the NDP, mm -hmm. with the NDP having a very uh, likeliness of winning, a uh, high likeliness of, of winning, and they came out third. And so at this point, uh, what we need, to, I think, to understand is that there is a lot of instability that is due to um, people not necessarily uh, feeling uh, like they belong or that they can relate to uh, the theater that has been happening in the House of Commons. And that's just not me saying this. There was a really interesting uh, study poll by Angus Reid just last week that was uh, showing that a lot of Canadians simply do not identify or relate with the political parties. Mm. What's interesting is that the Bloc Québécois has been essentially very low profile in the last, in the last years. They have been locked out of being a significant player, player in terms of vote in this minority parliament because of the agreement between the Liberals and the NDP. And they have not been uh, in the media, even here in Quebec. And so I think a lot of the votes that went to the Bloc Québécois might be just votes uh, that are about yeah, a shrug of the shoulder, a na vote for everybody else. Um, because essentially the Bloc Québécois has been staying out of the theater, staying out of the politics. And that's something that Yves-François Blanchet have said last night, that they were, quote unquote, the adult adult in the room. Yeah. And so it's not necessarily a vote for the Bloc Québécois, it's not necessarily a vote for their ideas or the sovereignist ideas. It's I think it, a lot of it might just be a none of the above kind of vote. And uh, that's something that will need to be factored in by the other political parties as uh, they're heading back to parliament. Just let me ask you finally, um, on Saturday, Justin Trudeau was on Montreal Private Radio. He said, I'm not going anywhere. 
Does that mm-hmm. change now, as you have been talking about here and elsewhere? I mean, there has been pressure from MPs, some MPs, and it's been quiet. There hasn't been any sort of overt rebellion yet, but people have been saying, wondering whether the party could win a general election uh, with him as leader. Others saying he is the leader and he will uh, he will lead this party into that election. Does any of that change in light of this second by-election loss? The thing about politics is it's not about the numbers. It's very much a human science. And so uh, the numbers tell us a, a story, but what people read in the numbers is going to be what determines the, the future of the leadership of Justin Trudeau. If liberal MPs decide to panic when they see their numbers, that panic in and of itself will, will create, uh, uh, will rock the boat for the, for the liberal leadership. Uh, if they decide that they haven't, lost by that much that it was very very close and they, that they can still pull this off if they make an effort and that the session is just starting then it means that they will likely do better uh, at least a little bit in the next couple of months it's really a matter of self-fulfilling prophecy if you believe that there's a catastrophe uh, impending uh, then you will behave in a way that will make uh, your 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 political option seen as more chaotic and that will in and of itself uh, create a lack of trust in the sense that Justin Trudeau needs to 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 go and so I will be watching for how the Liberal caucus especially the Montreal re- region reacts to the result uh, and that will be telling me whether or not the results are sending a signal uh, in one di- direction or the other. As you say, these results came in late in the night, early in the morning for some. Uh, I appreciate you walking through what we know about this by-election. Um, Emily, thank you very much. Thank you. Emily Nicolas is a columnist with Le Devoir. She was in Montreal.